Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Trainer Feed. We'll be bringing on our guest for today, shortly, Fanny Rivas, out of the Miami area. Um, before we do so, let's check in on everyone, see how you're feeling. All good? All good over here. What about you, David? Doing well, doing well. Hanging in there. What about you, Enjoy- I'm good, I'm good. I actually had a... Uh, uh, I won't go into too much detail, but I'm fucking pumped right now because I hit a performance benchmark, so I'm fucking buzzing. What's a, be- what's a benchmark? The, for me, was to perform muscle uh, ring, muscle up, strict. Cool. So I'm super psyched after four months of doing regressions, progressions, that I've been able to do it, so I'm pumped. Did I'm you pumped. do it? Where'd you hang up the, the rings that were high enough? Uh, I did it by scaffolding until someone told me to clear off. <laughs> So, uh, the scaffolding across in there's there's some buildings near me like, in like L sitting. Yeah, so I've done L sit like pull ups for a number uh, a series of weeks or maybe months, and then just finally I've done like some banded ring pull ups, uh, muscle ups, and then re- uh, progress to this. So only two reps, but I was stoked. So it's what matters. So yeah, Angel. All right, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Hey Fanny, how you doing? Hey, hey, how are you? I think you're already. Oh, there What's we go. Up? There we go. How hey. you doing? How are Great. You? How are we? Yeah, well, we're good. So this, I know we we spoke the other day, but as I mentioned, this is Angel and this is David. These are my coworker coworkers. Yes, coworkers, but co-hosts and also like fitness minds. So I'm glad you have to join us. Hi Angel. Hi David. Hey, how's it going, Fanny? Uh, how you doing today? Good. I'm doing good. Great. Awesome. Yeah, as we can see, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually. So, did you did you make that yourself, or what's? So, a very dear friend of mine and a firm believer in the peach made it for me. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, that's awesome. I love that's it. a trend setting cool. thing. Yeah, I'm so glad. With, um, so for our listeners, will be able to listen and watch this. Definitely check out the YouTube for the light in the background. Yeah. Um, so I know I've been following you on social media for a little while. I know you're based in the Miami area, but something I don't know of, and for our listeners to, to, to find out more about you, like tell us about your journey into the fitness industry. So when I was, well, I was a cheerleader senior year, but I was always like on the chunky side. Like I didn't really take care of my health and it wasn't really a priority for me at the time. But uh, at least I was still kind of active and disciplined in the sense that I would make it to cheer practice and I would stay active. But after graduating high school, I joined CrossFit and I did CrossFit for like a year and a half. And then I started working full time in food and beverage on the beach. See, I used to live on the suburbs, which is like 40 minutes from the beach. And I would make that commute. And sometimes with traffic, it was two and a half hours just to get to work. Each way. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, uh, so I totally fell off my fitness game. Like I was just like spending so much time in traffic. And then I would do like work nine to 10 hours in the food and beverage industry because it's working at the pool or we, I would have to work on the beach. And it was just long days. And my workouts just went out the window. And there was a time where I realized it was right before a hurricane where we like lost power for like a day and a half. And I was binge eating with my parents, drinking beer, like not giving, I didn't care about anything. And then I realized I was like, okay, like this, this, this can't, this can't continue. And I knew that I had to make a change in working in food and beverage full time. So I quit. And I made the sacrifice in taking a pay cut because I was working full time, making great money, but my health wasn't rich. And that for me is more expensive than anything else is our health. So I was like, okay, I'm going to figure out what I could do to design a life that I like and enjoy. And that is working towards my health and ultimately others health, you know? So yeah, so I, I quit food and beverage full time. I started working as a concierge part time and started studying for my ACE exam for my ACE certificate. And then I was offered a part time job for food and beverage. So I was able to have the schedule that I wanted, which was Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. 
just nice. work three days a week and then work on my personal brand the the following four and it worked out great but i wasn't really taking an oomph with it because mm -hmm. i was i was always finding an excuse to do everything because because i was just, just taking it full force but then the pandemic came about and you know everything shut down and my hotel went under a renovation so it kind of worked out in my favor it was a blessing in disguise i just went full throttle with my fitness game and yeah, yeah now we're here <laughs> so now you're completely full-time uh 100 percent into the into your own like fitness and your branding mm -hmm. everything and then how long was that um period before the pandemic where you were uh like part-time in the food and beverage and then like how long was that time period a year and a half okay so a year and a half then you come to this point and then thankfully it sounds like you you'd already half established your own personal business right and like the pandemic i think we've we've spoken a little about it in previous episodes where like it was kind of a big reality check for a lot of people a lot of industries um and then something i know i feel like i've seen you launch your own brand am i right in saying that yeah can you tell so, us a bit more about that yeah so i i like i thought i like i wanted a fitness i okay so let me start with my friend who owns shop xxa it's a online boutique with sw swimwear and i she's been doing this for like three years and i was helping her grow her brand and when we went to vegas one time for a convention and i saw like fitness wear and i was like oh my god that's so cool like it would be cool if i could have my own fitness line so that was always in the back of my head not a priority but it was just in the back of my head like that would I be did. cool if i could do that and then during that pandemic i'm like you know what i need a polo because if I'm going to be coaching, I need to have my own polo. I am representing my own brand. It's the peach. So the polo was like the start of it and a dad hat. And then I'm like, why can't I just make the peach on leggings? And it started and I, um, I did my first batch. I want to say like two weeks ago, I shipped out my first batch of active wear sets. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Oh, That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. And it's a lot of work. It's, it's, uh, it's fun, but now is the time to invest, you know, in ourselves and in our projects. So that's pretty phenomenal. I think if you've been able to set, I, I think what has set some people apart in the pandemic is like, they've gone one way or the other where they've gone like, Oh, I can't do anything. I'm so limited. Or, I've, or they've gone, Oh, I have now this amount of time and this amount of opportunity to do something I may have not had prior and the fact you've been able to launch your own brand, I, I'm sure it probably gives you goosebumps to be able to see like your logo on this clothing. Is that right in saying that? Yeah, it's like, I it, right, right when Big I shipped them, shipped them out, I was like, I look forward to seeing the tags, like the girls wearing it and feeling yeah. confident and, and loving themselves with the sets. And it's, it's rewarding. It's really rewarding. That's, yeah. Again, another congratulations. I think that's a pretty big achievement. And like you said, I think, when we see brands out there, we probably don't see the behind the scenes and the hours you put in the and communication. You have to talk to so many people, like just to get that going. And it's like, you have to wait for the, this to come in then you got to wait for it to embroider. And it's just like projects after projects, but it's, it's, it's fun. And yeah, sounds, sounds worth it though. Right. Like it sounds like long term. Yeah. Um, I did also want to dive into, I know you have collaborations and you've, you've mentioned them on the website. What do, so how do, how do you typically work with those? And maybe it's, again, we unfortunately in New York don't have such great weather, especially right. I mean, this week is okay, but like you guys have great weather down there. I mentioned like, it's like sometimes a little bit jealous of seeing how great it's all year round and Angel may dig in, but he, he's been to Miami. He loves it. But like what, yeah. so let's, let's talk about your collaborations with your brands. So I've worked with a few hotels in the Miami Beach area. One of them being, this was before the pandemic too, one of them being the Nautilus Hotel. Uh, they would have events where they would do fitness camps with like um, fitness lines and they would do a class and it would be small local businesses coming together and creating an event. Um, but yeah, I taught, a, I would teach boot camp classes there. And since I worked for food and beverage in the hospitality industry, I was able to maintain uh, great relationships and good rapport with other 
individuals who worked in the food and beverage industry. So I was able to reach out to them and, you know, at Mondrian Hotel, do their boot camps over there too. And yeah, partnering up with them. There's also another spa here in Miami called Casa Florida. And once again, thankful for the weather. You got you to gotta take advantage of what you got to work yeah. with. And when the weather is sweet, we got to go outdoors. And they have a great area where we would do group, group classes. And yeah, we're, we're, I'm building on starting group classes again because people were iffy in the beginning with this yeah. pandemic. But, you know, gradually people have to realize you got to keep it moving. Yeah, so. you have to find a way. And I think if you're something as well that we're probably, at least I'm jealous of being on the, upper, on, the um, on the East Coast compared to, let's like, say, like Miami is like, it's fine when the pandemic hit in March and it starts to get warmer and you can go outside a bit more. Like at least in New York, you can go outside a bit more, but like starting to get a little colder, starting to get a little more depressing here. And then hopefully it sounds like you can keep doing those boot camps because like you said, if the weather's sweet, you take advantage of it. And hopefully that's kind of what the weather you have all year round. Yeah. I mean, when it rain, it's been raining here, so. Oh, really? <laughs> take that back. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. Regardless, you still find a way to move way. it outdoors. Yeah. under a shelter or whatever especially since it's getting colder i have one of my clients that was saying david it's a little too cold for us to meet and i said no it's not uh <laughs> fucking you know layer up under layer up the, you know layer up. Um, I, I just found they, these leggings that are that are great online that they're like little fuzzy and they keep you warm so if you want send that to your client yeah perfect <laughs> there you go yeah uh fanny are you in the miami area yes i am in miami beach Okay. Uh, yeah. so I've, I've been there a few times just on vacation. Um, and it's an amazing area to be, uh, definitely lively. Uh, and I just wanted to speak or ask you about like, uh, the lifestyle in Miami and how fitness and the lifestyle kind of ties in, for example, like New York, uh, you kind of like, it's less, you, it's a walkable city, right? So you're walking all over the place, point A to point B. Um, obviously the pandemic kind like of shifted that. things a bit. Yeah. Uh, but active. Exactly. Um, so speak a little bit about like Miami and like uh, what the fitness tie in is over there. I know that, you know, the weather's probably nicer a little bit more so than the New York area. So can you speak to that? Well, there's, I would say Miami is a place that if you need to find motivation, there, there it is. Like, it's hot. You want to be, you want to feel comfortable. So Everyone is basically like half naked in shorts and crop tops because it's hot. And in order to feel comfortable in this heat, you have to feel good with, with yourself and work on maintaining a physique that you feel comfortable showing off because ultimately it's, it's hot and it's appropriate attire to be in shorts and in crop tops. And especially if you're on the beach or if we're on the beach, bikinis, swimwear, and you know, you don't want to feel like the person that's like, oh, I, like, I, I can't go because I'm not feeling good. Like, I'm not feeling myself. And everyone's like, let's go to the beach. So then you see and you're like, you know what? Like, I need to get it together. Like, I, I want to I wanna dive into an active, or, like, an active lifestyle and, and feel good about myself. Yeah. Because Miami is Miami. All the celebrities like to come here and mm -hmm. the clubs and tight dresses. And you, and you, you got to feel good. I was, I was thinking about that too, because it seems like, at least when I go on vacation, it's almost like everybody down there looks good. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if it was like a product of like people just go there and it's like a vacation spot or if it's like the, act, the people who live there just like continue to just work out and take care of themselves and continue to have like an active lifestyle. I know that you guys just, uh, you got city bike down there. We have city bike up here as well. Um, Lovely. And I love it. I love taking Same. city bike, going from place to place because you, you see a lot more and then you're also active it's, as opposed to just like driving around and mm -hmm. being in places like that. Like I know me and Jacques went to California and even though California is a beautiful place, you kind of have to like, um, like certain cities, you have to drive from point A to point B, yeah. but biking and being outside in like 90 degree weather is a uh, match made in heaven almost. Yeah, it's sweet. It really is. Uh, talk a little bit about your fitness niche. So have you developed a niche in your community? I know you got the peach thing going on. Is that kind of like your focus? Is that your area? So the peach is what I feel draws attention to the women and to everyone. 
but ultimately um, I, fo- I like to focus more on becoming like making it a lifestyle instead of like, you know, just focusing on the peach. It's, it's about the peach, but it's also about how we feel within and maintaining a healthy and active lifestyle, feeling you're like the most confident and just like being overall happy with yourself. So I like to, like, it's not more about looks. It's more about how you feel, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think from kind of like an objective standpoint, if people interdependent, like whether it's like male or female clients, like the first thing that people want is a nice butt, right. Or a working butt. And then Mm -hmm. it becomes like abs or something like that. And then maybe arms, but like that is kind of like the gateway. That's the intro. And then everything else kind of, goes from there but with your clients i'm sure you know that it is something deeper inside too right like it's a peach but it's also like i want to feel good i want to be able to move i don't want pain i i just want to feel good yeah longevity you know definitely definitely um and i think uh when you go into like different communities like you start to see like how important it is to be confident in yourself and feel good about yourself um yeah And is that kind of like the basis or the foundation of your brand? Absolutely. I, okay. So gearing, well, kind of towards your question, but, and also when I started my fitness career, my fitness journey, I started taking, so right after the hurricane, I was like, okay, I need a, I need a, I need to get it together. I started taking classes at this gym called fight club Mm -hmm. and it would be like 30 minutes hit and then 30 minutes on the bags. And I remember like, looking up to the trainers and like admiring them and being like, you know, they get to go out, they get to have fun and party and they still have their life together. Like (laughs) they're still active. Like I I give them props because they showed up here and they're teaching and like, I, I want to be there. And I remember like, I was just like striving to be that person. And now that I'm on the other side, like, I feel like, like I'm on the other side I like to make people have like, like let people know not to be intimidated when it comes to starting your fitness journey. It's fun. Like it's a lifestyle at the end of the day, once you make this a routine, it won't really be like a chore or something that you mm-hmm. dread doing. It's just going to come natural to you because your body's already used to all these movements and you'll get it together, you know? So yeah. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, no. So, yeah. I'm, that was- that's, that's what I mean. So I wanted to say, um, before I let David ask some questions, um, that was something else that one of my clients brought up to me. He was like, damn, you know, I just want to like go out and eat and party and just like still have a good looking body and be able to move and all that stuff. And I told him, I was like, what you see trainers do is not necessarily what everybody should do. I think the easiest part is maintaining, but when you want to hit a goal, that's when you got to go into like grind mode, right? And like sacrifices. Exactly. Yeah. Cause you got to start cutting, you have to adjust, you got to make habit changes. You got to start changing your lifestyle around, mm-hmm. but maintaining is probably the easiest thing you can do. Cause you already have everything in place, but yeah. getting from point A to point B is kind of like the hardest part. Yeah. Like I, I strive to get my clients from their point A to the to point B to then maintaining it as a lifestyle. Like once I see them great on their own, I'm like, yes, you see, you got it. Now going to a 7 a.m. class isn't so dreadful. Like you look forward to it, you know? Yeah. And different types of physical activities, different types of ways to sweat and work out. That way you don't necessarily just get bored of doing the same kind of training. Mm-hmm. I want to, I like that point. I really want to piggyback off it because I think sometimes, uh, and like you mentioned, if people are intimidated or don't feel uh, like uh, exercise or walking out is something they can do or get involved in, like sometimes the thought process behind that is there is only, for them, they'll think there's only one way to work out and it might be a grueling way that's not enjoyable. Like there's so many different ways to, and, and there's no wrong way, right? Like, and it's like, you enjoy mentioned as well. Like they're not always, some people aren't always the best examples or like how, let's say every one of us for here, if we did the same workout, we had the same meal, there's a different stimulus, there's a different response in the body for how we've eaten, and how we've, uh, how we've worked out. So that being said, like, if you find a way that like you said at 7am, like I'm sure you you might not like David. I know David is Olympic lifting, right? Like David, would you find yourself often doing some PRs at 7am? 
or would you typically perform better late in the day, right? That depends, you know. I mean, sometimes, depending on how the training program is, there's a day where you're like, shit, I got to go in, and the only time I have is 7 a.m. Like, there have been times where I've been working out at 7 a.m., and I'm hitting heavy squats or, or deadlifts, but... And you're dying a little bit? Huh? And you're dying a little bit, because you maybe rather do it later in the day. Is that fair to say? Well, yeah, no, I usually, usually my workout time is like 1, 1 p.m., like right after lunch. Um, but I don't know, it's, it's like a mindset, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And your priorities change too. So like you, you start realizing that like, you'd rather look forward to taking care of your health and getting closer to your goals than spending happy hour and, and on a Friday night and then not making it and not feeling great. Because once you start waking up so great in the weekends, you think twice about other life choices, you know? And because addictive, I think when you get the process, it changes, it becomes a healthy addiction. Yeah. I mean, it makes it tough too, I think, you know, because for example, if, you know, you're not feeling great at 7 a.m. and you have to go hit a PR, then you're either not going out that night before. Yeah. Or if you do, let's say you have something going on, you know, then you probably, you know, the, the best idea probably isn't to do the, do your, do your PR the next day, you know? Yeah. And then I'll just throw your whole schedule off. Yeah. Um, you you think about consistent. your schedule as a whole. Exactly. I mean, and, and yeah. when it comes to programming and schedule, how's your current uh, routine? Like, how is your current training style for yourself? For myself, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm about to start on my because I had I worked on a four week program, a peach program. It's called the peach program, but it's a hit workout, upper body, total body, total body uh, program. But it's based like twenty to thirty minutes, two to three rounds, depending on how I feel three to four and each exercise is 30 seconds hit like full power and uh yeah it's three exercises four rounds and that's how my routine is i'm actually wanting to get at least one day of weightlifting in because i haven't um lifted weights in a while and that's like a goal that i'm going to set probably like today (laughs) i'm gonna be like okay i just got back from travels from new york and it's like, when you get back, it's like, okay, where am I? Like, let's go. And um, yeah, so this Monday, I'm going to start my program. And it usually takes like 20 to 30 minutes for me to complete the workout. And in between clients, I like to get my workouts done, preferably in the morning. Yeah. Um, that, that brings me to my next question about weightlifting and, and women in general. Um, do you think there's a disconnect when it comes to people that only want to do, let's say, for example, HIIT training, uh, which does involve weight, you know, sometimes, depending mm-hmm. on how it is they're doing. And then other people that typically go to the route of only weightlifting. Um, and especially for women, how do you think the, the mindset has changed when it comes to going and starting a weightlifting program like you're about to do? Yeah. Um, I feel like the women need, should feel confident when it comes to their program with lifting weights because a lot of women tend to be intimidated and also uneducated when it comes to lifting weights. So the more you know, the more confident you feel in lifting the weights. And I think it's important to incorporate that in your workout routine. You know, the week should consist of two hit workouts a week and then possibly one weight, one day to, to lift and another day could be yoga. You know, just switching it up for me is like the best way to stay active and to maintain the active lifestyle. Yeah. What are some of the, uh, the sort of the um, excuses or I don't want to say excuse, uh, like objections that you have people, you know, women or even, even some men, you know, when it comes to you telling them, Hey, I would like you to start weight training and, you know, getting stronger. I honestly haven't had any of those excuses yet. Um, at the, That's end, good. Of the, day, wow. at the end of the day, if you have a goal and your goal is to, woke up a little bit or grow your peach then guess what <laughs> you're gonna have to lift listen you know? listen that's 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 what it comes down to and i think that uh we see that i mean i've seen that a lot of times where people are saying like i have some female clients that are like i want a bigger butt i want a bigger butt but i don't want to lift heavy and i just want to do like uh kind of not hit workouts but more like aerobic style like steady yeah. state you know what i'm talking about like 
10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, but not like do this, rest, do this, rest, right? Because thing. I have, you know, it's hard. I have people that are higher nutritionists, but yeah, but I think that, well, and I think okay. that, um, when it comes from somebody like you, right? Like, I think it means a lot more, right? When I say it, it's kind of like, oh, you don't know what goes on in my body, blah, 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 which makes sense. But I do think that you are leading kind of like the pack, right? Cause you're a woman, you can speak to weightlifting. You can speak to how it affects you and your body and you know, you guys are leading the pack and it's almost refreshing to hear that you don't have that many clients that come up to you with that, uh, excuse or uh kind of like preconceived notion right yeah. it means that everybody's getting more educated which is a great thing yeah 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 if 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 you're coming on if you want to join the fitness journey you, you should come with an open mind and willing to learn and want to be educated because some people just want to jump from from step one to step 100 mm -hmm. so quick and it's like no there's a lot you, you need to know like how do you how, how do you just want to jump into this you don't even know what a lunge is or if i tell you to do an inchworm you have no idea what it is like you need to know the fundamentals and gradually build up it's a it's a long process and there's no rush to it so yeah mm -hmm. well, it's a journey it's right yeah it's a sorry dave go ahead sorry right, no, what were you gonna say no what i was gonna say is like there's no rush and if I think something as well that can be an interesting conversation with clients when they want to, when they want to go from step one to a hundred, like knowing their why they want to do that. Like if you said, if it was an inch or if it was like a explosive lunge of some sort, right. But they can't even like step down or step up a step. Like, so, okay. So what's their, I think it's, it's been eye opening if you, we have those conversations with clients like, Oh, what is it about the explosive step up you want to do? And if they say like, Oh, for me, it means ultimate recovery from an injury, or it means it's ultimate weight loss. Like, and it's because sometimes the questions, at least I have the experience where they'll say, I don't know, just cause, cause I think it looks cool. And that, and that's fine. That's not wrong. But like, if we understand more about why they want to do it, you yeah. they, we can sometimes um, unpack the psychology perhaps um, as to why they want to go that direction, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. the thing isn't, isn't like necessarily good for them, you know? Yeah. Like you, you just gotta let them know that they're like, be, okay. Like I, I love that you're so enthusiastic right now about doing explosive movements and trust me, we're going to get there and you might hate me when I'm getting you to do some movements that's going to get you there, but you want to get there. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So you got to trust in your training. Yeah, that's the biggest thing too. What's not, I forgot who mentioned it earlier about, you know, let's say they want to get stronger or they want to put on some mass or, mm -hmm. or anything, especially when it comes to doing a compound movement. Rest is a big factor. Like I have a client or two currently that are very much like after we're done with the set of, you know, heaviest squats for them, they're like, all right, let's do it again. And I'm like, dude, you could barely talk because you're yeah. so tired. <laughs> You know, yes. how about you take a break, you know, and, yes. and they're just very much like, I just want to keep going because. I love I, those kind of clients though, because like they need a reminder, like chill, breathe, yeah. <laughs> breathe. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, it's I mean, so it, in it. it just comes mm -hmm. down to, I think, mindset of what's been sort of like drilled into people's heads mm -hmm. about what a quote unquote good workout is supposed to feel like. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so. Like I, I have virtual clients and I was training one of them and we did a 20 minute cardio hit and it was great, efficient. And she's like, she's like, is that it? Why does it, why does the session <laughs> feel shorter? And I'm like, it, it doesn't need to be so long. Like this is a 20, this was our intention. This was our purpose of a workout. We're going to do a 20 we minute workout. It. Yeah. Like 20 minutes go by. She's like, that's it. Like, come on, that's, it's 20 minutes and give yeah, it two okay. days, give it yeah. time. Right. Yeah, and you'll yeah. see, like, yeah. you'll, you're saying it's nothing right now, but by tomorrow or by the next day, you're going to be wrecked. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, just Take like you off. said, like mm -hmm. you said earlier about educating your clients, uh, you know, it's about educating them that, listen, there's going to be a point where if you keep consistent with something and you know, there may be a point where you won't get as sore, but in mm -hmm. reality, you're probably actually making progress regardless. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's great. And what's in right now, what's your current demographic in terms of who your clients are? We have like, um, so women. my demographics are, I want to say that they're like women from 27 to 35 years old. Mm -hmm. I even had a client that was 49, but I like to have my, like my preferred clientele is women who are moms, 
um, w uh, married, older women who are set with their careers, and you know who ultimately know what they want in life and are and know that they're going to be held accountable and they're responsible, you know, and consistent. Because another thing is, I I offer programs. I don't really do one on ones, like scattered. Mm. I sell them a package, which which ends up being a lifestyle, you know, because it's not just training. It's a lifestyle. It's an introduction to the fitness community in Miami. I, I like to train my clients in different gyms in different areas. And also they get to know my other clients and everyone, you know, it's a, it's a community that I like to build of powerful women that are in the range of those ages. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. coming yeah, coming from a business perspective, like what you've done is, it seems to be catching fire, right? And they say one of those things that every person in the fitness industry should do is try to create a community within your clients. Like even, I mean, we, us, uh, Jacques and David and I, we had worked together in a big box gym. And mm -hmm. one of the things that you know, we try to do is create a community, right? You know, this client, you know, that this client is not just 6am, 7am, 9am, you know, like you have names attached and then you guys yeah. also share spots and swap spots, you know, things like that. And uh, you build that community. And that seems to have a bigger impact, not only from a professional standpoint, but also from like the client's perspective, like a consistency yeah. standpoint, right? Yeah, like the community, and um, going back to my demographic, I've had two clients who have actually been like, they just moved to Miami. So I love those, I just moved to Miami clients because it's like, I'm here for them also to guide them. And in a sense, back to my hospitality experience, a concierge, like fill them in with the best spots and you know, like and give them an introduction to the community and so That's forth like what we do anyway to some extent right it's it like is trainers typically are the ones that are giving their clients suggestions of things to do you know? yeah yeah and i like to also um like i had done for my clients a boat day we i had um an opportunity where i was able to go on a yacht uh and bring eight of my girls and i just brought my clients and a few of my girls and that way my clients also like got a feel of Miami and like they saw what it is to go on a boat and have fun and, you know, be with your girls and feel good in your bikini yeah. and, you know, also be in the community of women together. And, you know, they all add each other on Instagram and it's all support. And at the end of the day, it's all love that you're getting from within your community. All right, guys, we gotta, we gotta get a yacht and put it up. the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we right wish we could. Start of bringing the ladies. Right in the middle of December. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring the peach babes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, huge cruise. Yeah. So uh, you'll come up on the yacht. How long would that? How long would that take in theory? Up the all the way up to. That take a little while, right? That take a few weeks. Jeez, I don't know. About? Like trying to get a yacht. If you got a yacht from, like, yacht from Miami, if you got a yacht from Miami to New York, how long would that take in theory? Oh, like, like two three weeks? days or something. No, nah, three, it's more than that. More yeah, I don't know. I know it's like a day to drive over there. Yeah, at least a day. I think it's like 18 hours, right? Yeah, but I, I would think it would be longer on the boat. <laughs> Doug, how about you go find out? And <laughs> yeah, I'll just do it in a boat myself and do it around. Let me know what goes on. <laughs> yeah. uh, I did want to ask, actually, so I'm not as familiar with Miami as someone like Angel, but if um, how, like, if you had... um someone who was looking for even just on a trip there like the best gyms to check out i know equinox is a couple of locations i hear and see a lot about anatomy like if you had three gym facilities if someone was to go there for like a week and try out like what would be your top three um i love elevation elevation okay i don't know if you guys have heard of no it. i haven't it, anyway. they have um i want to say it's like four locations they have one in downtown in Miami shores, on the beach. And I, it's, I love that gym. Like I like a gym that's not so, I like, I like Equinox, but for like, I like a little bit of grudgy. Mm -hmm, gyms, yeah. you know? And elevation. No less of the towels. We were able to use yeah. Bring the humidity up in the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The huge yeah. fans that are just blowing. 
<laughs> yeah. bullets. Give me some of that. That was Fight Club, which was a great gym, yeah. but they're, I don't think they're open anymore after the pandemic. Oh, but Elevation, for sure. Um, the UFC in Kendall is a good one. And where else? They're not going to throw me in the ring if I go there, though, right? They're not going to be like, here you go. Here's a ring. Boom, ring. Bing, bing. No, 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 no. Here, it's, gloves. Cool. it's all boxing no, and stuff, be so it's cool. But they won't throw me in a ring and be like, here you no. go. Here's 12 rounds, right? Okay. No, all right. no, no, no. Good to We're know. friendly over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, and then there's this gym now called the Peach Factory. That's Is that yours? Is that yours? No, it's not mine. But I know they were pretty probably inspired with the Peach yeah, but I'm, I'm teaching classes there, and well, nice. that's in the works. So cool. maybe we see you as a as a co-owner one day. As a what? Maybe we'll see you as a, one of the co-owners of the facility one day. That's in the works. Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers good. crossed. Yeah, no yeah. spoiler alerts, but mm -hmm. oh, that's awesome. Ultimately, my own my goal is to have my own studio, not necessarily a full blown out gym, but a studio where we could get in our workouts and our exercises and where it matches you know my aesthetic yeah that's awesome i that's did awesome. uh i did so i'm sure sh i'm sure you may have heard of brett Contreras, the glute guy Are you familiar with him brett Contreras. Yeah. Contreras, sorry so yeah. this guy i think he's based out of california right angel Indian? uh i don't know if, i don't think he's in california i think he's in either arizona or texas oh, yeah i think he's i think arizona I can look mm -hmm. that up. I mean, but this this guy, I think he did a PhD, um, pretty much just in like glute development. Wow! And like he, I, we went to a, a lecture, and he's like, "Oh, if you do the hip thrust, or if you do the front squat, like he like it's all very scientific." And then, but whereas uh, um, leading to was, I think what he ends up having is like he has like a small facility in his garage where like a few mostly women. We're trained to develop like a bigger, a bigger booty, bigger glutes. And now he's got like a full blown gym, right? And he's like, according to social media, he is the glute guy. So, oh, uh, what's his name? Brett? He's in Vegas. Bre oh, he's in Vegas. Oh, no. Oh, he's in Vegas. Oh, he's I don't know why I thought he was in California. He probably was. I mean, he, he's always been around that area in terms of, you know, like I think in California you have a uh, super, super training gym and, Mm -hmm. all those places that that he's been at but yeah he invented his whole like his own hip thrust machine which yes. is like, it's pretty cool he invested yes. it's, it's his own hip thrust machine it's huge that's one of the reasons it's hard to get into gyms you know it'll be better in big warehouse gyms but yeah. yeah i mean he's been selling them shits like crazy i need a i need to see i need to oh, yeah. he's, a, he's yeah he's in that realm of of business with you so like definitely cool check story. him out and yeah. um it's he's he's a very knowledgeable guy. It was really interesting to hear what he had to say. But like again, he same thing where he started off on a very smaller scale, like in his garage, pretty much, and then like it just blew up into a big, full blown thing. And like it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really That's impressive. Journey. How long? Yeah, absolutely. I think you you probably answered this earlier. Uh, how how long has it been since you went from your job at the uh, hospitality business into like what's going on right now? Like with, so with I was working part, I started working part time when I yeah. started dedicating my stu to my studies yeah. for a year and a half. And then that was right before the pandemic. And, and then when the pandemic came around and everyone got unemployed, I was like, full force fitness. That's it. Like you have to do it. Because, you know, I would procrastinate and I wouldn't feel confident enough to start training clients even after I got my certification. And, and it's just like, you just have to do it. It's like with any job, you feel uncomfortable the first two weeks and you're just like, eh, because you're not, com you're not the used to the flow of things. So you just start finding and figuring out your own flow and, and it's your own business too. So you're able to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which in a sense, it's like a whole thing. You got to work on content. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. Man. I think, uh, you touched a really good point. Go on. Hey, Angel. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I think I was delayed. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, like, it's a really good point you, you brought up about, like, the like the building confidence at the start of the training career because something I found myself thinking was here you are with maybe your first client and you got your certification, right? Um, and, like, I think a lot of things in life, like, when you learn, uh, uh, when you get a certificate or you study something, like, there's sometimes, like, there's sometimes a bit of a 
a gap between what you study and what's actually happening. You know what I mean? Like there's some things that you can study that won't prepare you for like, you know, like if you're studying on the certification, like, all right, well, your client just collapses and like hurt this and that. You're like, well, the, the bugs don't tell you how to react, right? Sometimes it's common sense or it's practice or it's just like experience, right? So I found myself in the first few weeks, I'm like, here I am. And I'm trying to teach someone how to hinge or how to squat. And they look like, I don't know what the hell is going on. And then how do you even, how do you even go like, uh, yeah, good job. Like you, you, it takes, it definitely takes time to be able to identify like, all right, we should try this differently or do this differently. Like it's not, you know, it's not something that anyone, I don't think is often born client, with. Right? What's yeah. up? Depends on the client sometimes. Yeah. Big time. You know, it's hard when you see that they're putting in so much effort and they're mm. not performing it correctly and you don't want to discourage them. You know, so it's like, See, it's not hard. Yeah, yeah. I, I, learned, I learned that kind of the hard way once. I was training a buddy of mine. This is at Equinox. This is a while. This is a while back, and we we had a really we really had a good report. And my report, even with these guys, it's always like you know, you know, busting balls all the time. And right. one of my buddies was I, I forgot what I asked him to do, and he couldn't do it. It looked it looked pretty bad. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? And my and other people heard me, and I. <laughs> That's the thing that, like, I I feel so contained at gyms because mm. no, but at the moment, you know, I never it. meant it in, in a really bad way. Like, I would never yeah. say that to somebody that I just met, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it like on the first up. session, yeah. <laughs> like first session, like what the fuck was that? And then everybody's like, what was going on? You know, I had a client. I had a client, Katie. I don't know if you, if you if you two remember Katie. I remember. She lives in Florida now, actually. Uh, Melbourne, like in that area. Anyway, but um, she was very much like on it, you know, in terms of just giving me shit all the time. I would be like, hey, Katie, can you grab me a barbell? She's like, why don't you get it yourself, David? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I remember that. My clients then, looked back. They were oh, like, what's going on over there? I was like, and, no. <laughs> no, but that's what, and then the, one time I got something. I mean, we Listen, we know anatomy to some, some extent. We never, you, I mean, you forget sometimes because you don't, you're not on a book the whole time, but. I forgot I said something incorrect. And she's like, what the fuck was that, David? Like, don't you know anatomy? Aren't you a trainer? Yeah. Like, get your shit together. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it was just – and then one of my – I think Andrew Schaefer was like, David. But, hey, I mean, it's it comes down to the way you communicate something, like you said. Yeah. If you have somebody that can't do something, you – especially now with virtual training, it's very much like, okay, shit, I really can't use my hands to try to yeah. maneuver you the certain way. I got to – Try to yeah. find something to relate to. You know? So to, I had a virtual client yesterday and it was funny because going back to what the fuck is this? Um, she was doing fire hydrants and she started getting lazy towards the end. And she just had her, her legs everywhere. And I'm like, Stephanie, what are you doing? I'm like, you're getting sloppy with me. You're getting sloppy. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> and I just, we started laughing because it was like, it was funny, but it was it was true. I was like, "What are you What are you doing?" I like, currently have someone like that that I have to tell him stop. Yeah, like, very, very firm, and I always joke around. But with with this one person, sometimes like, "All right, you need to stop right now." Yeah, and then he kind of also gets serious. He's like, "Oh shit, my bad." All right. Yeah, no, you definitely got to build a rapport with your clients, and uh, it's it's also about energy. You got to feel out the energy and see how your client is with you, and if like you know, like feel it out. If you feel like they're they're cool, then it's it's cool. But if not, there's always like boundaries and the levels of respect. You open up with a joke, and if they yeah, laugh, especially in the beginning of yeah, feeling like, them feeling out, the client feeling feeling out the client, and because you know by third fourth session, it's like I'm already filming the client dying. And it's like okay, but I want to be able to do the first session. You know, hey, welcome to your session. You're live on Instagram. Like. Yeah. <laughs> perfect form yes yes, yes welcome yes. so i got a i got a quick story on on that and I'll, I'll wrap up but like i had um so at equinox you have um you're probably familiar with this fanny like you get like a commentary session with your with a trainer if you join and, and all this so there was this one one guy he'd done one with me before and he was like you know i think i'm just gonna like wait and see if i want to train i'm like all right do your thing and then a year later he's like hey i want to do this and, he, and i was like man, I'm not doing this if you're not buying sessions. And eventually he bought sessions, but like long story short, he did three sessions with me or whatever. In the third session, he was like, so um, can you film me? Because I want um, I want to I want to remember how to do this by myself. And I was like, all right, but who was it? I, I won't say, but like, 
<laughs> they were doing they were doing bent over rows, mm. and it was I, I'll put it politely, it was a work in progress. It wasn't a finished product, right? And they're like, and I'll just so you know, I'll film this, but like, this is Don't I still me. think this. Say again. Don't tag me. Don't tag me. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. yeah. <laughs> Don't, yeah, don't attack me now. But like I said, like you still like, there's still ways to go. Anyway, long story short, he ends up posting it on Instagram, which is whatever. But the funny thing was, let's say he posted it. Let's say I woke them at 11 a.m. on a Thursday. By 12.30, I see an Instagram, he posted it. But it was posted 50 minutes ago. We only finished the session 30 minutes ago. I was like, he, he went to the bathroom, posted it mid-session. It wasn't a great form. And I was like what like i have mm. never that is the most interesting but again you know it, maybe maybe for him it was a sort of an accomplishment maybe he had, he had never even done any bent over rows for real and he's like look at me God, like right now <laughs> and i'm gonna motivate me so keep going because yeah, my trainer says that this is a work in progress I, I agree. Like, I definitely don't want to like shoot anyone down because I yeah. think that sometimes there can be too much of that. And like we, mm-hmm. uh, we have someone in our circle from the um, up here in the in the metro area that like we've seen some we've seen some people that just all they do is like shoot people down on like meth on methods or work. And it's like yeah. wow, maybe you can take a bit more time to like educate as opposed to shitting on people. And like so, I mm-hmm. definitely don't want to go down that road. But then again, there's there's a fine line between, and I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Like, Hey, if this is a big deal for the person, like it's something to be worth celebrated, yeah. but don't, no, don't tag me. I mean, me, there's people like, who do it just for the show and then there's yes. people who actually want it. And right. if you see that the person wants it, then, then that's great. You know, like encourage them. Agreed. But yeah, there are, you know, I haven't, thankfully I haven't dealt with like a client like that, that does it for show mm. because it's usually like I sell them on the 30 day package and I'm just like, you're going to be held accountable. These are our days. Like we confirmed these days. Yeah. If you don't show up to your session and you don't let me know 12 hours prior, then that's on you. Yeah. But th- Cause if you're like so flexible with your client that you're like, okay, seven 30 comes around. It's five 30. Oh, I can't make it. Okay. No problem tomorrow. No, then we're not consistent. No. And I'm not. And then me as your coach, I'm not here. I'm not holding you accountable. And right. That's what I'm here for Time yeah. is money too. You know, you can have some. Yeah, else. exactly. Like that's the thing that like clients also need to realize that you know, like it's the time too. Like a lot of my clients like to, and I like to, and I enjoy chatting with them and stuff. But sometimes it's like, okay, bye. Let's go. Mm-hmm. You know, got a <laughs> next client. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, and then uh, I think some of them get it. I mean, there's there are some people. There's a person that I train out, you know, privately, <clears throat> and it's right before I have to go into work, and it's very, it's such a very, it's a very tight you know, five, 10 minutes that I have that it's like, all right, if I don't leave right now, I'm going to be late. Like, yeah. like I got to, I got to deuce out, like get up yeah. like, to be like, polite about it. Yeah. I have a four thirty today in person and then a five thirty that they, it, we were supposed to be one-on-one for five thirty, but they canceled and they want to do it virtually. So I'm going to have to rush home mm. and, and get them on the zoom, but I'll make sure to let them know regardless. But Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. The thing with my clients that I love doing is taking videos and photos of them because women love that. That's content. And it pushes them too. Like one of my clients, I don't know if you saw her. Um, I had posted a before and after her burpees. In the start of her journey, she couldn't do a burpee at all. Like it mm. was, I was like, wow, I love the fitness journey. Like there, there's so many steps. There's so many levels of beginning. And it, like, it's just like, wow, like she really couldn't do a burpee at all. So I would have her do modified one leg out, one leg out, one leg in, one leg in. And even like getting herself up, her balance was like unstable. And sure enough, 30 days passed. We're at 90 days and she's flying burpees and her balance is much better. And it's just so rewarding. Cause it's like, we, we did this. We, mm. we were able to accomplish this together, you know, with consistency and dedication and it's great. From point A to point B with consistency. Yeah. yeah. I, love, I love seeing, I get, I get those sensations as well when you see me finally achieving and, and then sometimes you forget how far they've come and the video evidence is great. Cause like you can remember someone wasn't able to do it, but like, if you mention the details of like, no, you really couldn't even stand up, but you had no balance. Now, even if you feel a little shaky after 10 reps, you're still got the strength to come up. So it's, it's a big deal to do that. I had a moment it's, like that yesterday with one of my clients who we were doing 
you know, we just started out doing uh, power snatches. And it was kind of like, and in the beginning, he couldn't do a deadlift. Like, it, looked, it, looked, it didn't look, the, he had great flexibility. Yeah. But when you have great flexibility, you always need to find the right balance of stability, right? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. You're so loose. And, and he couldn't do it, but he got it. But then when we were doing the snatches, he got one really well. And I don't think I've ever done this, but I actually freaking, like, I got excited. I'm like, oh, shit, that was great, man. And I, like, clapped, like, five times. I'm like, yeah. Wait. And then people are looking at me like, okay, my That's best. energy. <laughs> Like, yeah, oh, you, uh, you, you like, need oh. that david you and i'm very much that. i mean these guys have seen me work you know in person is i'm very much like all right let's, let's okay. go again take a rest or what you know you see, also, like, it was, it was completely for the most part, um, i i feel out the client but i'm like the total opposite i love being loud <laughs> and my music <laughs> and yeah i had a 7 a.m that i the 49 year old mm. when i would have her she was a funny one she was funny and she was a tough cookie in the beginning because she wanted to take the easy way for everything. And I'm like, Heather Marie, you, you're capable. Like you do these burpees and you just want to sit here and just do leg extension sitting down. Like, no, <laughs> like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna get you. And I remember I had, I had made her do like, like a few squats and she, and she was like, really? And she looked at me so hard and I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like the first time I ever felt like, whoa, as a trainer, I, I looked at her and I was like, there's going to be a lot of things I'm going to make you do that you're not going to like. I'm just mm. letting you know that right now. Mm -hmm. But you're going to thank me. And then I remember, like, future, yeah. future, future sessions, she's like, love you. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not, that's happened to me a couple of times. And I've learned to, the way I deal with that is I kind of look away. And I'm like, yup. <laughs> you just look away. I'm like, really, Dave? I'm like, yup. Keep going. <laughs> so funny. I mean, it, oh, well, I mean, it is a little awkward to some extent because it, at least for me, I don't want to be very like authoritarian. Like I don't want to be like, do this. I have a client that says, yes, sir. And I tell him like, all right, let's maybe not, I'm not a drill sergeant, but yeah. you also want to have the level of comfort with your client to keep the rapport going, you know, eventually. Yeah. And also reassure them that they are capable, that you see that potential in them. And that you believe that they could achieve that workout and like get that like, push through it. So people need that oomph because if now you train by yourself and you're here and you're supposed to do 50 reps and you're like one, two, uh, forgot seven, nine, all right, <laughs> ten, done. You know you're not following through with the workout and that's why we're here. Agreed. Yeah. No, okay. that's a very good point. Um, we really want to spend your time, but we we can't thank you enough for coming on and get into kind of you know unpack like you know, wow. yeah it, yeah it right fast. um that being said like i'm sure we'll find ourselves at some point uh having you back on for another call and to see how far your business has come along like you said it's only been a couple of weeks since you launched your brand like hopefully the next time we touch base like yeah. you're competing with some big brands and we're seeing it hopefully we'll see it even in the new york area yeah. um that'd be a pretty sick thing to see that we have spoke to you at the early stages and then i know something that we spoke about as well was like i definitely feel confident like knowing more about you as well like if we have a client who relocates to miami based on what we've seen you do like we feel very confident like putting in them in touch with you because uh, pandemic of course mm -hmm. especially like now we have a bit better um understanding of your energy because that's a, like you said that's a very big thing Mm -hmm. um so again thank you so much for for joining us and talking with us my we appreciate pleasure it. david angel duck yeah you got it <laughs> it was a pleasure where can people find more about you instagram uh feel free to so, plug any upcoming events go ahead um extremely active on instagram viva fanny at viva fanny and i have my own website www.fannyrivas.com there you can learn a little bit more about me and when it comes to future events and group classes instagram check out my story i'm active i'm i'm on there a lot <laughs> <laughs> sounds good that's awesome well yeah, thank you thanks. so much for being here my pleasure you guys have an amazing weekend and don't forget about the yacht <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we'll, right. we'll touch we'll touch base we'll see we'll awesome. do the job field touch base <laughs> all right fellas stay peachy it was a pleasure right. take care everybody. Right. bye take care Oh, that was funny. We gotta find who's gonna find the yacht though. That's the that's the other question. <laughs> Listen, that was that was a, a better shot of finding a yacht than we can. Yeah. I mean, no, use was, your accent. You'd be like, oh hey, you know. Who me? You said? Yeah, use your accent. 
Oh, yeah, get him in a nice polo or something like exactly. that. Exactly, get a nice polo. Hi there, on. I work for Ralph Lauren, and I'm trying to find a yacht to <laughs> ship <laughs> my ladies. You need Sounds a polo. legit. You yeah. need to get some khaki shorts. You got to tuck know. in that polo and get some boat shoes. Boat shoes, I was just about to say. Boat. I have boat shoes, I have a polo. I don't know if I have any khaki shorts. That might be my only purchase, but I have the, the other two. There you go. So I'm so halfway, halfway there. there. I'm more than halfway yep. there. Yeah. Was great, <laughs> yeah, it was a great episode. It was very cool meeting her finally and uh, getting to know uh, kind of like her, her brand. Um, and then also like it was very kind of like, I don't know, like refreshing to hear how she started as well as yeah. like uh, the intentions with her clients, right? Like you have that focus with your clients, trying to make them go from point A to point B, but also focusing on who they are and what they're about and feeling more confident in themselves. So, and then also highlighting movements, right? Like recording your client and celebrating movement. That's, I don't know. I feel mm. like that's a really good uh, angle to take it from. Right. I think that's something I don't do enough of as well. Like seeing, so, like teaching someone from the ground up, right? Like the first hinge squat they do, whatever it is, right? Like it doesn't matter, yeah. but like whatever they do. And then you see them, like sometimes you forget the or i think sometimes i've done this in the past of like if you guys ever score back at the client's very very first program yeah and you're like wow like this was what we were doing like we really start from the bottom and now like how complex do you like i i've done that in the past where i've gone to a client be like hey do you want to see your very first program Isn't that yeah crazy this is what you first started doing with me i wish like i recorded some of their movement like how mm -hmm. she highlighted the burpee from beginning to end yeah. like sometimes i feel i think this is more personal for me like i feel self-conscious about how they're moving right now so then i'm not like let's record this right because like i'm kind of like well this needs some work but maybe that is mm. the point right like maybe that is the point to highlight it and the point to say let's record it now i'm going to coach you through it in a month it's going to be much better and you'll see right. the difference on video right versus just like you feel it like feeling it is the probably the most important part but like when you see it it's kind of like wow that's what it used to look like and this is what it is now like uh, eye opening yep yep all right all right well, let's wrap it up wrap it up all right wait <laughs> all right wrap it up. No, everyone just froze for some reason <laughs> uh, yeah i know there's like a delay when i'm talking right now but anyway uh we'll wrap it up and uh we'll catch you guys next time so yeah right, catch you on the flippity flint <laughs> bye guys Bye. <laughs>